I am here today with Tati Gabrielle, who you may know from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, from The 100, and the upcoming film Uncharted, which I believe just wrapped. Uh, so, so excited to be chatting with you today. I'm very excited to be here. You have said that you really approach roles very spiritually and as if the character you're playing is a soul out in the ether. So I was wondering, as a result of that, do you ever dream as your character? I have had a, had a few dreams as Prudence. Um, they're like very weird ones um, that I, I, I can't remember fully, but I remember I had one dream with Addie and Abby where we were the weird sisters and we were in the academy. And I don't remember what happened, but I remember waking up thinking like, whoa, because that was the first time I had a dream as a character. And then I had another dream with Ambrose. Um, that was interesting, very interesting. Um, so yeah, it happens sometimes, not, not, not all the time. You said that you have mental conversations with your characters. Is that a way that you kind of get into character? It is. When I like start my day, like I like call upon my character or the soul that I'm communicating with. Um, and usually it's like through, like with Prudence, I would play Dear Prudence every morning. So like Dear Prudence, once you come out to play. Um, and um, yeah, I like have like conversations um, with them, just like either discussing like how they would feel in this particular moment or how, um, or if I've like missed something or have like done, not like honored them properly or honored their story properly. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it's a way that I, yeah, get into character and it's a way that I like make them whole, I guess. Is there a conversation you've had with Prudence or Gaia or someone else you've played that really has stood out as something like something you feel like you like learn through the conversation? So I was shooting Sabrina in the 100 at the same time. Um, and so, which was a very crazy thing in my head trying to like, this is Gaia, this is Prudence. And when I first started doing Gaia, while I had already started shooting Prudence, Prudence was not happy. Um, she didn't like that her space had to be shared. Um, so oftentimes when I was on set for the hundred trying to play Gaia, Prudence would come through and I'm like, girl, sit down. You will have your time later. You've had enough time. Like, can she just get space for a second? And Gaia is non-confrontational, so she's not going to fight for that space. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably like the most, uh, uh, I guess taxing conversations I've had with Prudence was when she, I had to make her sit down so Gaia could have a space. Have you had uh, anything kind of creepy, unexplained happen uh, either on the set of, you know, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina or The 100 or anything? No, actually, like I, I never had anything like super scary happen. I was scared during certain scenes. Well, not scared as me, not scared as Prudence, but yeah, scared during certain scenes, but never like, nothing too weird. What's it like to be scared as yourself, but not as Prudence while you're, you know, in a scene as Prudence? Um, well, in those moments, I kind of like let Prudence, because, because Prudence is the fearless one, like I would just kind of let her take over for, for, for that period of time. Like the example that I have is like when we did the burial scene um, in, in part one, episode eight, um, where we had to kill Agatha and all that. I was terrified in those woods because there were like sounds. We were like, all of our spells were real spells um, that you could look up and like they're, they're practiced. Um, and so I was like, we are invoking some very dark stuff right now. Really didn't want to be out there as me. Um, and so like, I was like, you know what, Prudence, you take over because I can't do this right now. <laughs> and so it, it it's a relief, honestly, in those moments, like, even if I'm scared, I'm like, okay, I know that I have somebody else in here that like can be the the protector, essentially. Do you have any inside jokes uh, with the cast? For Chaos, we had an inside, well, me, Jazz, and Ross um, started this inside joke that then went out. There was this grocery store by where we lived called Choices. And there was this thing that we would always be like, Oh, you got choices with me, baby. You got options. You want Kit Kats or you want Snickers. Like we would just go on this whole rant for however long. So like then the thing like just became anytime somebody said choices or op options on set, it would just be like, oh, I got options for you, baby. I got choices for you. You want choices? I got choices. Um, 
So that's one. That's like the biggest one that I remember. Um, and of course, the the in my feelings challenge really like stood the test of time with us. Um, yeah. Who do you ship, and or would you ship anyone from the 100 with people from Chilling Adventures of Sabrina? Okay. So I would. This has always been my dream ship between the 100 and Sabrina. I want to ship Murphy and Prudence. I think that that would be. The most epic, like if Murphy didn't already have a boo thing with Imori, like he could go and holla at Prudence. I think that that would be, that would be just perfect. Um, if you could, if Nick and Harvey had a ship just for a second, I would just love that personally. Like, Narvi or what would it? Narvi or Hick? Narvi or Hick? Narvi's probably better. Or Ambrose, you know, with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I live for it. If you can make that happen, make it happen, man. You know what? We fan have art. the internet behind us. Anybody fan art? If put Ambrose with everybody. One Ambr big orgy. One big witch orgy. I was wondering if uh, you could tell me some stories from set. This one is um, the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you on set. Oh God, the one thing that, so it already oh, comes into my mind immediately. And it's, <laughs> so I'm a girl, I was on my period and I, they wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. Cause you, when you ask if you have to go pee on set, like, and they're trying to get a shot, they're like, can you just, can we just do two more takes? And I was like, yeah, okay. Um, and I, you know, our AD, our first AD was, um, was male. And so I didn't know how to like tell him like, and so then eventually, like, I was like, okay, Cora, I really gotta go to the bathroom. And I go, and then I ended up, uh, and I'm sorry to the public for the graphicness of this, but I ended up bleeding through to my costume. So they had to get, I had to go to the bathroom. They had to stop shooting for like 30 minutes because I had to go to the bathroom, change my clothes, like do a whole nine, and I come back out, and Corey, our first AD, he's like, how, why didn't you just tell me? And mind you, Corey's known me since I was 20. He worked with me on The 100 and Sabrina. And he's like, why Why wouldn't you tell me? And I was like, because I, I didn't know how to... Uh, and he's like, just next time, just tell me. Just tell me and it's going to be fine. And I was like, okay, I'm sorry. So that's, that's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to me on set. Thing that made you last the most on set? Um, there was the episode where uh, in in Sabrina where um, Sabrina's trying to be top boy and that there's this scene of just like Miranda's like discussing the whole top boy thing and like telling Sabrina why she can't be top boy and Miranda like one of the takes she comes out and she says top dog like you can't be top dog and like we all bust out laughing and we could not stop laughing for like 20 minutes. They were so mad at us because we could not get a takeout. And she did it again like two more times and like could and we were just laughing like top dog? What is a top dog? And she's like, it's a it was a TV show in Australia, I guess, when she was a kid. And so she just kept she's like, that's all that I think about. Top boy with a top boy, a top dog. It's like, yeah. So now that every time I see that scene, I just think top dog. Are there any outtakes that you wish had actually made the final cut? Part three in Sabrina, when we have like Ambrose locked up in the in the in the witch's cell, and 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 mm -hmm. Hilda comes to visit, and she brings the chicken. I had to eat this entire. We did a scene where you just see me on the couch outside of Blackwood's office, eating this whole freaking chicken. And I ate so much chicken that day and it did not make it. And I was like, you guys didn't even use it? And I ate so much chicken for what? Why? So that, that just out of like bitterness, I wish that made it in just cause I had to eat so much chicken. Next time you're gonna be like, in my contract, if you're making me eat an entire chicken, you need to at least, I need at least five seconds of that in the final cut. Right, yes, come on. <laughs> Appreciate the craft. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the support here. Thank you. For our final little segment, uh, we are going to do co-star superlatives. So I'm going to give you the name of a co-star and I would love to, for you to give them kind of like a high school yearbook superlative to go along okay. with them. Okay. So first one, Kieran and Shipka. Most likely to be CEO of the world. I want to be Kiki when I grow up. We used to tell her that all the time. Like she is 
a 40 year old woman in the 20 year old's body like she's just a full woman we're just like yes so yes most likely to be ceo of the world uh gavin leatherwood most dashing he's just a dashing young man a dashing <laughs> man he's just so dashing so charming chance perdomo <laughs> he's gonna hate this most likely to die in a freak accident and let me explain why. Dance is known by all of us on that set for doing things that he doesn't have to do and getting hurt. Chance has had, he had two concussions during the course of the show. And it was like, one was because he did a stunt over and over again that he never, he didn't have to do it that many times. And he freaking did it over and over and over and over and over again and gave himself a concussion. Or he'll do things like, jump off of random things like and do a backflip just because he wanted to um so yeah like i feel like chance would be <laughs> most likely to die in a freak accident of his own doing or a nicer one i would say most no or most noble i'll give him both <laughs> you know, two sides of a coin <laughs> jazz and claire jazzy best hugs best hugs or most likely to bring love into the world. Jazzy just got a beautiful spirit and like any room she walks into, any person she speaks to, like cannot help but to feel the love from that girl. Like Jazzy is just radiating with it all the time. Um, yeah, and it's inspiring. It's like, you just makes you like, you're having a bad day that give Jazzy a hug and that bad day is wiped away. Um, so yeah. Lachlan Watson? Most likely to be the next supermodel of the world. Lachlan is just, they're so unique. Like, and they're just, since the moment that I met Lachlan, they inspired me to just unapologetically be myself and, and to just not give a fuck about what anybody says or thinks of, of me and to just do like, the way that like Lachlan has led their life, like, and the the level of confidence and the level of like i don't know just like strength and power that comes from that i don't know more people should talk to lachlan about how to be full of self yeah eliza taylor eliza best mom eliza's gonna be such a good mom like and i'm pretty sure i've told her that but like she just has the most like Loving, gentle, like nurturing energy, as well as like knowing what it means to be a rock star. And I just feel like whoever her kid is gonna be is going to just have such a cool life because of it. Um, Eliza's like helped me through some moments in my life, especially when I was young and like had just started on the 100. So like, yeah, best mom. Tom Holland? Tom Holland. What would be your superlative? Class clown or I'll just go with class clown. Cause dude's just a goofball. Um, and he has like, I had so much fun on set with him. Like he like, he knows how to keep moments very light and like knows how to like keep the energy with everybody going. And he taught me some really great Cockney slang that I don't remember all of them, but all I can remember is if you say to somebody like, hey, you got a lady? You think Lady Godiva Fiber. And there's all of these freaking like, he went through this whole list of like Cockney slang words that like need a like riddle to go with them for you to understand what the word is. Like you would never think a lady would be a $5 bill. Like what? What? Yeah, or if not class clown, um, sweetest heart. That boy has such a big heart. He has such a sweet, sweet heart. Like, I like cannot express that enough that he's just got the biggest freaking heart. Um, yeah, yeah. It's either class clown or sweetest heart. Yeah. Sweetest class clown. Sweetest class clown. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then Antonio Banderas. Oh, um, Best dancer, um, uh, most suave, cause you know, he's just the suavest man alive. Um, Antonio did a whole dance number for me one day 
in the green room from chorus line and my whole life was made my whole life was made i was like oh my god this is incredible he's such an it just he's an incredible dancer he loves to sing loves to dance and yeah best best dancer or greatest showman well now we need a dirty dancing three starring antonio banderas i feel like that's the only option okay. <laughs> some whispers out Shoot him, shoot him a text yeah <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me Tati. it was like it was this was truly a joy this was so much fun do you have anything else that you want to say before we before we say goodbye um be kind kiss your mom and just spread light and love in the world and that's 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 my final say that's it that's a wrap cut 